So we chose um, three uh, traditional irrigation systems in the Middle East, uh, looking at one in Palestine, one in Syria, and one in Oman. Uh, and we decided to look at this because uh, each one is an ancient water system um, that was developed out of the need and the water scarcity in the region. And we chose uh, three key words as well. So in Palestine, we chose resistance. In Syria, reconciliation. And in Oman, reciprocity. So uh, in the case of Palestine, uh, we looked at uh, the village of Batir, where there is a, a pre-Roman era uh, irrigation system. Um, and actually, this village, uh, we chose the key word of um, resistance because this village uh, faced a problem when the separation barrier was being built. Uh, the plans for the, the wall were to cut through this village. Um, so they filed um, to become a UNESCO World Heritage Site and they were successful. And so the village has remained um, a symbol of uh, peaceful resistance in Palestine. Could you tell us uh, about an example of one of your cases? Yeah, uh, we can uh, talk about a canat in uh, Syria. So there are many canats in Syria, but uh, we choose a particular one where uh, there was uh, because it caught like there was some uh, problems between communities uh, about uh, water, and through the canat system, they managed to reconcile reconciliation and uh, to solve their water issues so like they constructed this uh, system of uh, which brings uh, groundwater up uh, in surface and uh, it, it managed to uh, irrigate the cropland here so this poster is looking at the uh, solid waste management system in Morocco um, so prior to 2006 they had a big problem in Morocco with um, lots of open dumps, open landfills that weren't being sorted correctly by municipal governments. So in 2006 the government uh, launched a reform initiative that was supported by the World Bank um, to uh, really get to grips with the, the waste system there, to open up more um, kind of sanitary landfills. Uh, before this you had um, thousands of people scouring over these landfills to try and find recyclable uh, materials and things like that. Uh, really, really dangerous environment, really toxic. Um, and now they've tried to create uh, cooperatives where people can work in a more clean, sanitary environment, uh, earn a guaranteed wage and um, yeah, increase the rate of recycled goods being recycled in Morocco. Actually, the whole project is uh, initiated by 40 people coming, arriving recently to Sweden, mainly from the Middle East region be it Syria, Lebanon, Palestine, uh, mostly. The whole idea was trying to uh, imagine what will be the situation after the conflict done in a, at a certain point of a time, which for this exercise was 2040, and imagine what will be, what are the possible scenario for the whole region at that point, uh, starting from a blank sheet, so it's not a forecasting exercise, it's mainly a creational scenario building exercise based on uh, no real factors today, actually. Yeah. And do you plan to continue uh, with this project? Or? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Actually, the project, the project, the, out, the first outcome was done on a three, three, three workshops. The first one was to decide what the two, two most, two most uh, important aspect for f that will shape the future. And if you look somewhere in here, that will be mainly trust and uh, empowerment. And based on that, we got, we got four, uh, four quadrants. Each one of them tell a story, a different story. The four stories have the exact same probability of happening. And the whole idea is that if you know what are the possible scenarios of the future, then, uh, then you might add actions to either enforce or work against one, or one of them, depend on each strategy, actually. Yeah. Um, so um, we thought that uh, Rift of Gardens in Gaza would be a relevant project to this exhibition as it deals with um, environmental sustainability projects in the Middle East. Yeah. Yeah, we liked how it was a really like small scale community project, but implementing like a sustainable solution to deal with the issues that um, communities face in Gaza, um, but also tackling like food insecurity and a lot of different, a lot of different. Issues.